Now we're going to return to the referendum result in Turkey because from Washington we're joined by Stephen Flanagan. He's a senior political scientist from the think tank, the Rand Corporation. He joins us live now. Um, Stephen, given the fact that Erdogan had much bigger resources than the no campaign, his message was ubiquitous. Are you surprised by actually how close this result was? No, not at all. Actually, the, the fact that the vote was so close suggests that the country remains deeply divided over this move towards uh, a development of a very strong executive presidency with a few checks and balances. Uh, the, the country, if you look at the preliminary results, it was divided along the lines of the Anatolian heartland, uh, where Erdogan's base uh, resides, uh, very heavily supportive. The three largest cities and the coastal areas in, along the Aegean and in the Kurdish regions in the southeast all of those uh, actually uh, supported the no vote. So uh, it does underscore that the country remains very wary of how the uh, Erdogan, particularly given his record over the last several years, might use these powers that the, the constitutional amendments would award him and the, and, his par and the dominant party. Now, he's being pretty fiery in his rhetoric since this result has come through. He's now talking about the possibility of another referendum on reinstating the death penalty. Obviously, for the EU, that would be a complete uh, aversion to its whole ethos. Is this the end of Turkey ever rejoin or joining the EU? Is, this, is that over now with a more Western society? Well, it, it depends on, how, I think, as you said, Kasia, how he does play it from now on. There were some who hoped that if the victory was a little bit larger, that perhaps he would temper and uh, his approach and use the next two years to show that, uh, you know, as he was going to accrue these new powers, that they would be used for the purposes that that the uh, his party and, and he has, has portrayed it to help revive Turkey, to get it, the economy going and to deal with the terrible security situation. Uh, but I think given the closeness of the vote, uh, a number of us uh, who have watched this closely are concerned that, that he may double down a bit uh, over the next several months uh, to, uh, to ensure that, uh, that he does uh, continue to keep the pressure on his, his adversaries. Uh, perhaps uh, step up the uh, uh, the counterinsurgency campaign and uh, and also perhaps keep up the rhetoric uh, uh, you know that was been rather hostile to uh, European and other outside uh, as he sees it interference in Turkey's domestic affairs. And Stephen, he's talking about these changes to the constitution. He's saying that he needs them for security reasons. Of course, we had that coup nine months ago. Does is it justified what he's trying to do? Well, the the idea that uh, that they may need extraordinary powers to deal with the security situation is one thing. It's more the way this would shift uh, this shift towards the executive presidential system that uh, that is envisioned under this constitutional change uh, would would eliminate many of the checks and balances that exist, uh, you know, currently in Turkey and also in other other countries with strong executive presidencies like the United States and France. The president would have you know almost full control over appointment of the government. Uh, the budget and uh, and the and the constitutional court, uh, and so it would give him sweeping powers to be both judge and jury on his own policies, uh, and 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 any successive president. I mean, it, obviously, it's not just the, this is not just a question of how President Erdogan and the current uh, Justice and Development Party might use these powers, but how any future party might use them. Um, so the concern is more that you know how will this impact uh, human rights? How will this ex affect, in particular, uh, I, I know that the Kurds and a number of other uh, uh, minorities within Turkey are quite concerned uh, that this could lead to, to further uh, repression against them. Stephen Flanagan from the RAND Corporation, fascinating to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, Kesha.